Hello, this is Hilary Weller. In this video we're going to be looking at the domain of dependence of a PDE and the domain of dependence of a numerical method and what they can tell us about the stability of the numerical method. The domain of dependence of the solution of a PDE at position x at time t is the set of points at a previous time that influence the solution at position x and at time t. So if we consider the one-dimensional linear advection equation for dependent variable phi and advecting velocity u, so that's d phi by dt, rate of change of phi, plus the velocity plus d phi by dx is equal to zero. Uh, we know the analytical solution for this equation, assuming uniform constant velocity u, uh, which you can pause the video and take a look back in the notes and fill in the analytical solution before I continue. Here is the analytical solution. So the solution at time at, at position x time t is equal to the initial conditions, that's at t equals zero, but shifted around, so at x minus ut. What I'd like you to do in order to help to understand the domain of dependence is to draw the domain of dependence at, of position x at, and at time 8 seconds on this graph assuming a wind speed of 1.5 metres per second. So position x equals 12 metres is here and t equals 8 metres, 8 seconds is here. So what, what points and at what times, what's the set of points at particular times that influence the solution here? I'd like you to draw a line on this graph um, which is the domain of dependence of this point here and you can pause the video to have a go at that before I continue. So here is the domain of dependence. It's a straight line, all of these positions, the solution at all of these positions affect what the solution here. Um, so it is a straight line with gradient 1 over u. <coughs> the current Friedrich Louis or CFL criterion tells us something about numerical methods. The domain of dependence of the numerical solution could, should include the domain of dependence of the original PDE. So this, this condition is necessary but not sufficient. It say that it should include, uh, but that doesn't, it, uh, doesn't automatically mean that it will be stable, but for it to be stable, the domain of dependence of the numerical solution must include the domain of dependence of the original PDE. So for linear advection, the domain of dependence of the differential equation at position j delta x and at time n delta t is a straight line of slope 1 over, through, 1 over u through j delta x and delta t. So we're going to look at the domain of dependence of the forward in time, backward in space advection scheme. Here is a repeat of the FTBS advection scheme. Um, so we can see that uh, phi at position j time n plus 1 is dependent on uh, phi j and phi j minus 1 at time n and in turn phi j n is going to be dependent on phi at time level n minus 1 at position j and j minus 1. So we can, we can fill in the domain of dependence. Here is, this represents phi at position uh, j time n plus 1. Um, and I'd like you to pause the video so that you can mark on this diagram points which are in the domain of dependence of this point. Of this point. So which points influence this point? <clears throat> so this is a time n plus one. It depends on it depends on a time level n. It depends on j and j minus one. And these two points will depend on these three points. And these three points will depend on those four points, and so on. So uh, pause the video while you do that um, before I continue. So here is the domain of dependence of um, the forward in time, backward in space scheme. Uh, I've also said here, draw lines corresponding to the real physical domain of dependence for cases when the current number is minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. And what can you deduce? So. If the, if the current number is zero, it means there's no wind, so the domain of dependence is a straight line of slope infinity, so it's a straight line like this. In this case, um, the domain of dependence of the um, 
numerical scheme does contain this line, so it's stable. It's, it spans it. For a current number of 1, uh, the slope is going to be 1. So this is current number is now the normalized wind, because I'm assuming that uh, delta t and delta x could be 1. Um, so the domain of dependence is a line like this. And again, it's um, surrounded by the domain of dependence of the numerical solution, so it's stable. However, however, if we have a current number of minus 1 or a current number of 2, they're outside the domain of dependence of the scheme, so it's going to be unstable. So the numerical domain of dependence contains the physical domain of dependence only when the current number is between 0 and 1. So FTBS is unstable for current number greater than 1 or less than minus 1. But from this, from the CFL criterion, we cannot say when FTBS, we cannot say if FTBS will ever be stable. Now we're going to look at the domain of dependence of the centred in time, centred in space scheme. Here is a reminder of the centred in time, centred in space scheme. So phi j n plus 1 now depends on uh, two different time levels, n minus 1 and n, and um, three different spatial points. So I would like you to draw the domain of dependence of phi at time level n plus 1 and position j for CTCS. Pause the video while you do that. You should have something like this with uh, a, a checkerboard pattern of dots filled in. So phi j n plus 1 does not depend on phi j n. It depends on phi j n minus 1. At le time level n, it depends on the points either side. Um, and I've shown here also the um, lines corresponding to the current number of minus 1 and 1. So we can see that CTCS will be unstable if we have a current number greater than 1 or less than minus 1. Um, another thing we can notice about CTCS is, apart from um, the initial time, uh, depending on how you initialize CTCS, the solution is found on two sets of points that are not coupled. Um, so these points are never dependent on uh, the points that are not filled in. So you could have two, two completely different solutions, one at the white points and one at the grey points, which never know about each other. This is a manifest, this, so the, the solution can oscillate between two unrelated solutions, which is a manifestation of the computational mode of CTCS. Um, so the domain of dependence and the CFL criterion can tell us when some schemes are unstable, but how are we ever going to pr prove stability? Um, at, the, at the back of this chapter in your lecture notes there are some exercises based on um, this video, and in the next video we're going to be look at von Neumann stability analysis, which is how we can prove when a scheme will be stable.